Welcome to our review on the rates of photosynthesis. So first thing we actually need to consider then is the fact that when we're thinking about plant growth, it's not occurring at one constant rate throughout the whole year. What we'll see is that does vary at different stages of our year. So if we're thinking about when plants are going to be growing their fastest, then that will be in the spring and summer when it's nice and warm and there's more sunlight available because those are the conditions we need for photosynthesis and therefore that's when our plants will grow fastest. There are three ways we need to remember that we can increase the rate of photosynthesis. So the first one is that we can increase the amount of carbon dioxide present. The second one is we can increase the amount of light present. And the third one is we can have a warm temperature. If we think about commercial glass houses, and remember whenever the or exam paper says a glass house, it refers to what you may know as a greenhouse in your garden. So our commercial glass houses then use lighting systems to make sure that they've got a higher amount of light present. And in some cases, these lighting systems will be on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They will also have heaters present, which will burn fuel. And that has two effects. Because they're burning fuel, where well, they're going to be generating carbon dioxide, so the amount of carbon dioxide present inside that glass house will increase. And because they're a heater, and as we burn, we generate heat energy, then it will increase the temperature as well. If we think about light, first of all, then, we know that light is needed to provide the energy for photosynthesis. So what we actually find is that the more light there is, the faster the rate of photosynthesis. Now, you'll get a graph like the one at the bottom there, because when we reach a certain point, there is going to be something else that then takes over as the limiting factor. So the light intensity will be the limiting factor for that entire point that as we increase the light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis also increases. But as it starts to level off, even though we're increasing the light intensity, that tells us that something else is limiting the rate of photosynthesis. Second factor is our carbon dioxide. Now we know that carbon dioxide is one of those raw materials we need for photosynthesis to take place. So the more carbon dioxide there is, the faster the rate of photosynthesis, up to a point again. So just like we saw with our light, as we increase the carbon dioxide, the rate of photosynthesis will increase, but where that line starts to level off, again, something else is limiting the rate. So it's no longer the lack of carbon dioxide that's limiting photosynthesis, it's something like the amount of light present. Finally, we need to understand how temperature affects the rate of photosynthesis. Now, this is the one that has the different shaped graph, as you can see on the left. When we're thinking about photosynthesis, we're talking about a chemical reaction. And as with a lot of chemical reactions inside living things, they are controlled by enzymes. So what we actually find then is we know from our earlier learning that enzymes are affected by temperature in a very specific way. As the temperature rises, the rate of photosynthesis will increase because the enzymes are gaining that kinetic energy and therefore are more likely to collide with their other reactants and trigger the reaction. However, once we pass that optimum point, and we get it too hot, then the enzymes become denatured. That means the active site has changed its shape and therefore it no longer fits the substrate and so photosynthesis will eventually stop. Last thing to remember here then is the definition for this term limiting factor. So whenever we're referring to the limiting factor, we are talking about the factor which is limiting the rate of reaction. And the reason it does this is because it's at the lowest level. So you will see that one factor may limit a reaction at the start, but if we keep increasing that, eventually there will be something else that becomes the limiting factor.